hello welcome to the melanin gold channel and i have to come to you guys and talk about this um catfish episode um the most recent one um it premiered last wednesday but i saw it for the first time last night the other day and this episode was the second episode of the new season the sixth season of the catfish um catfish tv show and it was this episode um pertaining this guy alante um and a, a girl that he was talking to on the internet called nevea and for those who don't know nevea is heaven spelled backwards and basically um i've been watching catfish forever like since the first season i've watched almost every episode at least one at least twice um i'm a big fan of the show and uh, something i've noticed over the past all six seasons there's sh i've noticed that a lot of dark darker skinned girls tend to use to cat when if it is a darker skin or catfish in somebody do they not think that darker skin there are some darker skin girls who are physically attractive that men would would be um attracted to because you know because i understand it's catfish you're like basically kind of um duping the person to believe that you're the person in the picture when you're not. So of course you're gonna put a photo of someone that don't who's not you. Um, the thing is, I noticed when like white girls catfish, they're not putting a person of another race or another skin color. But a lot of the times when like black women, particularly darker skinned black women, do it, it's someone who looks like the complete opposite of them they they'll be dark and big but like the girl in the picture will be light skin damn near looking biracial or damn near looking white and i just want to do a real re quick recap of this episode and kind of explain the things that i noticed it because it's becoming like dark skin girls using light skin photos it's becoming like a routine pretty common so this episode was basically a um about a guy named Alante who's been talking to a woman named Nevea for eight years on and off. Now he lives in a town called Sonago, Michigan, and she apparently lives in Detroit. Now the fact that that the fact that that did not ring any bells to him about what was really going on um shocks me i mean yeah i think it seemed as if he started talking to her when he was like a teenager but he's a grown-ass man at this point he should like some sense should have gotten into his head at this point he's been talking to this girl for eight years good grief he's t about t 24 years old and he says that he has deep feelings for this girl and he even went so far to say, I quote, she's the perfect example of the girl of every man's dreams. And they basically asked him, okay, what do you mean by that? When they sat down to talk to him. And he was basically like, oh, she's romantic. Um, she um, sends me text messages, loving text messages. We um, plan to go to Vegas. We've talked about going to Vegas and getting hitched. Um, it's hard to find a girl like Nevea. And I'm like, okay, so you can't find someone in your area or maybe in a nearby city that you can talk to and who says romantic stuff because it's not difficult for a woman to be romantic. So I'm like, uh, okay, whatever. I'm not really believing you here, but okay. And he even went as far when they need and Max sat down with him saying that, 
he would drop a real girl for Nevea in a heartbeat, no matter what. So he would drop a girl for a girl, a real life girl that he was dating for four months. He he was dating a girl for four months and he literally broke it off with this girl for this photo, this fantasy of this light skinned girl who he has never met and doesn't even know to be real, most likely doesn't know to be real because of the situations that have been going on. Um, he mentioned that on several occasions that he's tried to meet up with her, but every time at the last minute, there's always an excuse of some sort. And he's also said that he has um, video ch chatted with her on several occasions, but every time it's at nighttime, it's the room is dark, he can't see her. And I'm like, dude, are is things not it's like things not clicking in your head? You not putting two and two together? And at this point, I'm thinking he's coming suspect to me. I don't know for sure, but he's really suspect of being color struck at this point because I'm like, you have an entire town of girls that you can talk to, but hell, an entire country, a world of women you can talk to. But you're over here crushing hard on this Nevea, this little light skinned Nevea chick who is pretty evident. She's giving you all the signs that she's not real. But OK, but at this point, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. Um. So basically, you know, Neve and Max do their, their thing. They research and like the research that they do is something that anybody can do. But, you know, for the show, they research and they discover that Nevea is actually a woman named Audrey. She lives in Brooklyn, New York. She's a photojournalist and a fashion blogger. And she's quite popular on the social medias. Like she's popular on Instagram, Facebook, and all that. And they even go as far to look to see if... Um, well, actually, first, they took the phone numbers that... Um, Alante gave them that Nevea has called him on and they took those phone numbers looked them up to see whose name is under the phone number and the name of a girl by the name of Latoya comes up um, it turns out that I think Latoya lives in the same town as him I'm not sure I forget what they said but it also what I know for a fact they discovered that Latoya and Alante had 23 friends in common. So, and that also that Latoya was talking to other, on the phone, other um, people in the town, friends of Alante's. So this woman, they believe, is catfishing multiple men. Um... And so what they decide to do, they decide to message um, Nevea through the phone number that um, Alante gave them that popped out to be a Latoya. And they message her, they call her and leave a message on her phone to call them back and basically tell her like the jig is up we know what's going on and what ends up happening they're Neve and Max are driving down the road and all of a sudden they get a phone call from a woman named Sierra and they um Sierra um asked them if she could meet up with the two of them and she they say yes they meet up somewhere and they discover that this Sierra chick, and she's a cute girl, like, um, cute little dark skin black girl. And they discover that she's actually friends with both, she knows both Nevea, and I put Nevea in quotation marks, Nevea and Alante. And she feels as like she's stuck in the middle of the situation, and she just wants, um, Nevea to come clean and tell everybody what's going on. And basically she calls um, 
Well, they asked her, okay, are you Nevaeh? And she's like, no, but I can call her and you can meet up with her. And she ends up calling her and they said, and she says that um, Nevaeh wants to meet up with you in an hour at this park. So Max and Eve goes to Alante's house, picks him up, and then goes over to the park to meet Nevaeh. Now, before I forget about this, um, right after they leave um, Sierra and go to pick him up, pick um, Alante up, um, they basically um, tell him about Sierra that, yeah, we met up with a girl named Sierra and she said that she knew you and he was like, yeah, um, she has a kind of a crush on me and I've known of it and he, and I noticed this is what I need is like, um, well, this is me paraphrasing what he said, but Neve is like, um, you didn't, you know, you didn't jump on that. She's a cute girl. I mean, if I were you, I would get with that. And it kind of made me laugh because I'm like, damn, Neve, <laughs> I didn't know you was into the sisters like that. But at the same time, it's very interesting because after Neve said that, Alante was like, um, yeah, she all right. She okay. Um, and he did mention that he, she, he thought that she was too young, but at the same time from his whole, when Neve said that, oh, she's real cute. And, but he, Alante came back with, um, yeah, she all right. She okay. Um, it, it pretty much kind of confirmed to me that um this is like most likely this dude is color struck he's just want him as his cute little light skin girl fantasy right now that's what it came off to me because for you because the girl was cute and for you to kind of overlook all these girls in these town and including sierra who need backed up to be fine you know he thought she was cute for an a fake eight year relationship with some random ass girl that you don't know, kind of goes to show me the mouths that some men, black men, will go to get with a light skinned girl. You know, um, It's very interesting to me interesting to me how Neve could see her her being attractive and see her beauty, him as a white a white man, but for some reason Alante ain't feeling it. And you know, it could be his preference. I just you know, me personally I found that to be interesting because you know, it could be his preference, but at the same time, Neve thought she was cute and like Neve is married to a white woman, you know, and they just had a baby. So if Neve can see her beauty, why can't you, you know? And so after that, they take, the three of them go down to the park where they were supposed to meet Nevea. And it turns out to be, of course, obviously not Nevea, but his god sister. Um, well, his more so his play sister, um, a girl named Erica and actually Max and Neve ended up meeting Erica and another male and a male friend of his earlier in the show like they were having like a get together at Alante's house and they ended up meeting Erica earlier in the show and it turned out that his dear dearest closest friend was the one catfishing him and also um not not to mention, Erica is also a dark skinned girl. Now, at the park, they basically ask Erica, "Okay, why did you catfish your friend?" And she basically said that, "Oh, Sierra, the girl you just met, had a crush on Alante, and she wanted to kind of get with him." And she basically said that. She didn't want to, um, the two of them to hook up because she didn't want to be in the middle of it because she was friends with both of them. And 
she also said that he was talking to other girls and to prove to Sierra that she, she he was talking to other girls um he um she started messaging Alante through the Nevea profile and they asked her oh what was that the reason that you created the Nevea profile and she was like no I created the Nevea profile years before um this whole situation with Alante and she would say oh friends at school and girls at school would um I would have them they would ask me to message their boyfriend to see if he would cheat and respond back and message her back and that was your proof that he was a cheater and it, it seemed as if, if you know need called out the bullshit he he knew deep down inside that she was not telling the 100% truth and and I tend to notice when they meet at first it's like it's either a half a truth or they're kind of putting a facade over a facade over what the real reason why they do doing this and every time they kind of get together the next day when things calm down um the cat fisher fisher comes out and really tells the real reason why they did it and so that what that's what pretty much happened um the next day they meet up with erica again and she um gets into other reasons why she did it she felt that she was played by alante because for seven and a half years on and off she was dating a close friends of alante's and the friend ended up telling Alante that he didn't really think the relationship was serious. And Alante and she was upset at Alante because he never told her that he the boyfriend of hers never thought it was serious. And I'm like, okay, you're in like it seems like this relationship started when you were teenagers. And who to me, like, who has a really serious relationship as a teenager you know you kind of date when you're a teen and you kind of move on as you grow up you know you grow up and you grow apart usually usually and it seemed like she was putting all the fault on Alante when Alante has nothing to do with the, the relationship she had with this dude and she's not taking any responsibility for it and Max noticed that like okay you're you seem very angry and hurt and it doesn't come off as you're being honest. So what's, you know, what's the real truth? You know, what's really going on? Why did she, why did she continue this for this long? And now, now she comes out with the real reason, the, um, the real feelings of why she continued this and why she did this. And she basically said that, being Nevea, she liked the attention. Um, cause with her in real life, people always said that, you know, that she was too dark skinned and too short and too chubby. You know, she was always like she would say things like she was confident, she was pretty, she was light. And I noticed how she associated um being pretty and confident with light skin as if you can't be pretty and confident as a dark skinned woman and she also mentioned how Nevea was a model and how everyone liked her and wanted to talk to her and like message and chat with her and every time she would go on there and pretend to be Nevea under the profile she always had to remember like they really don't want me. They don't want to talk to me or get to know me. They want Nevea. And she finally came out and said, you know, it had nothing to do with him. It was more so my inner problems, problems and my inner issues that I needed to work on myself. And I really like that how she was able to come out and be so honest at the end and really analyze the situation that it more more so than anything you know in the beginning she was complaining how 
it had to do with him because Elante didn't tell me um, about his friend and woo, 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 and his friend did this and Lante did that. She was saying all these things about what other people were doing that her, but she wasn't, she was saying all these things, what other people were doing to her, but she wasn't reflecting back on herself on why, why she really did this. And she also mentioned at the, um, and how like Avante just kept kind of going along with it. And I'm like, and basically me, this is me paraphrasing. She basically said that like, you know, you brought on yourself cause you kept going along and it was pretty obvious that this chick wasn't real. And I had to kind of agree with her. Cause I'm like, dude, you so damn color struck on this little light skin girl that like you can't, can't even look to see what's going on around you. And she even mentioned once that they were in the same room together and he was on the couch and she was on one other side of the room. And I'm assuming that she was talking to him as Novea through her phone. And he was on the, on the couch on the other side talking to Novea, but really was talking to Erica. And she mentioned how they were in the same room together and how he was so in his phone talking to Nevea that she, he didn't even notice that Erica had got up and left. And I'm just like, wow. And so was Max. He was like, wow, that's deep. That um, someone is so involved with this fantasy, this pretend girl that he ain't even seeing reality of what, what's really going on. And yeah, once again, I agree most definitely that what she said that he deserved to get strung along, I agree most definitely with that, okay? If you're stupid enough to fall in love with a picture of this little high yellow bitch you ain't never met, that's on you, okay? And, you know, and I, I like how she took responsibility at the end, saying that it was more so about her than anything else. Um... I, you know, I give her kudos for that. And it turned out at the end where they forget, forgave one another. Well, he forgave her. And they were friends, platonic friends. I don't think they ever had like a thing or had sex or anything. They're a platonic relationship. And it turned out that she, um, Erica was actually pregnant. And they were happy... Well, not pregnant with him, but, you know, pregnant with another guy. They were just friends. And they were happy and they made up. And I, you know, I like this episode because, like, I like the fact that she admitted it had more so to do with her and her taking responsibility. And I felt that the show was giving a message, particularly a message to dark-skinned black girls um, in life. Um, you know, I think people are gonna like, you know, say things like, oh, you're pretty for a dark skinned girl and you're pretty for this and pretty for that, whatever. And yeah, there's going to be some ignorant ass people who say that, but I feel if you let something like that get to you and really damage your esteem and who you are as a person, um, it says more about you than it does about them. Because not everybody in life is going to find you attractive or like you. That's just the way it is. And even with light-skinned girls, like, yeah, they may have um, the upper hand when it comes to dating and get more options. But at the same time, not everybody is going to find them attractive. Just Because just because you're light-skinned doesn't mean that everyone is going to find you irresistible or that you're attractive either. And... You know, I think, yeah, it shows that they're color struck and they have self-hate. But for you to let someone who has a lot of self, their own possible self-hate and dislike for their own dark skin, you shouldn't let that affect you. Because, I mean, think about it. Why um, are you so concerned with someone not liking you when, hell, there's people around who don't like themselves, you know? So... I really like that she was able to do some um, 
inner inner analyzing and inner work on herself. Um, and I, you know, I applaud for her for that. I don't like that she catfished her friend, even though his, the dupe deserved it for going on for eight years. But you know, I'm glad that she learned from this, and I hope he learned from it too. And it's becoming very common with the catfish episodes involving black women where this tends to happen um, because um, they know dark skin black women, they know that the, um, that the men that they're trying to talk to or deal with, they're going to pay attention to the liar complexed girl, you know, and it kind of sheds a light on the whole idea of colorism and how we view lighter skinned women versus darker skinned women. Um, I just found that interesting. And I, you know, that's all I have to say about that. I hope um, you like the video. Comment, rate, subscribe. Um, and you have a good day.